I think we can all agree that 2020 was not the best year for a lot of different reasons. The toughest moment for us was to learn that our new Hansa 418 had been grounded and we couldn't sail for most of the summer. She came out of the water early and we could see that she was in a bad way with the hull flexing upwards barely able to support her own weight. It's now 2021 and things are looking up as Aurora is going into the workshop to be made strong again. Join me as I follow the guys at Plascorder and Montage and learn just how this type of repair is done by the professionals. Hi guys, welcome to part one of the repair of Aurora. Um, if you're new to this channel, we had a grounding last year in July 2020. Uh, it's now January 2021 and uh, we start the repair process of um, uh, the keel delaminating against the hull. All of the hull uh, infrastructure needs to be repaired as well. So um, I'm here at uh, Plaskoda and Montage in Svenninger Marina in Stockholm, Sweden. And Aurora is now in that workshop and I'm just about to go in for the first time and just uh, see Patrick who's working on the boat to see exactly what he's done in the first few days. Um, I'm not going to be able to spend that much time today down here uh, because it's Tanya's birthday actually and I need to get back and we'll go out for a nice meal and everything but yeah. I don't know how this is going to go yet, but um, I'm super excited to find out what, uh, what they've found out already and um, yeah. Let's go inside and take a look. It turns out he's actually left for the day, so I've just missed him unfortunately. But I can see that they've uh, pulled out a hell of a lot of things out of the boat already and um, we can go down and have a little look and see exactly what the damages really look like down there. Those are all the floorboards just taken up. That's the saloon table. As you can see that everything is very carefully protected down here. Wow, this is weird. And yeah, we can see the whole structure of a Hansa 418 here now. We can see exactly what the damages are around here. Wow. <laughs> This boat looks totally different without any floors and without table and everything, it's just a bare space. Yeah, you can see that they've been marking out what needs to be ground away and what needs to be done there. You can see the damages there, all the cracks on the internal structure of the hull there. This is the grid, basically, that's uh, bonded to the hull there and that needs to be repaired and, and that's really just behind the keel here is really where the strength lies um, I could tell that because as soon as uh, as soon as the weight was put on the keel and it was pushed upwards all of this structure was coming upwards by at least one or two inches and um, it was a sorry sight to see this gives us really a good idea of what the damages are looking like there's plastic being put all around the boat and you may have seen this uh, if you've been watching Expedition Evans they did exactly the same thing because what happens when you start grinding this gel coat down is the gel coat goes absolutely everywhere and it causes a huge mess so it's better to try and minimize that as much as possible um, and that's like I say as, as much as possible there's still going to be bits and pieces I guess that escape but uh, yeah, I'm confident in what they're doing here. Um, they've put a lot of protection around everything, you know, to avoid, avoid tools banging against everything, some, some protection on the stairs. Um, they've got a, uh, the vacuum, big vacuum ready to go here to suck up all the, uh, uh, the gel coat up through the tube. See that on the hanses, the keel has a big plate that it bonds to actually, um, which I kind of like, to be honest, and then that plate is is bonded into the hull. Um, one thing that I will speak to Nicholas about and the uh, plastic order about is actually providing maybe a little bit more access down here into these structure parts here, into the grid, 
because what tends to happen with the hands is whenever you get some water in the boat is it will this this more or less is the lowest part of the boat around here and the water will pool up inside the inside the grid and uh, it's very difficult to get the water out only poking a tube through those little holes you can see down there so uh, I'll see if there's a better solution um, that we can we can do so I can get the water out of there the bilge pump is all the way back here right but that bilge pump is actually sitting higher than a lot of the places under here so so the water seeps underneath this floor it seeps right from the back there if the wa any water comes in the back it seeps forward and then it ends up sitting in here and in here as well the bolts all looking okay shape I guess but uh, I think there might be new bolts going on there. I'm not sure yet. Wow. <laughs> Can't describe my emotions right now in seeing all this. I'm, I'm just... On one hand, I'm really excited. On the other hand, I'm like... Yeah, we'll see how time goes on. And I'll try and get down when they start doing the grinding and, and that kind of work. Sorry about the noise from the machines going on there, but that's the way it is in a workshop, right? This is the trolley that they use to take the keel off, basically. And it's pretty heavy duty, actually four clamps on either side and they just probably just going to lower it on and uh, take the keel off you can see here that they've already started to um, strip back the sealant on there I'm not sure exactly what they're using whether it's like a 5200 or a, some kind of seeker flex there I imagine something pretty pretty strong though to bomb the keel on there but uh, that might be a challenge to get out. At least the boat's new. So it might be a little easier to take off at least. Anyway guys, on that note, I'm gonna leave it for today and then uh, come back in a few days and see where they've got to. It is another day and as you can see, all the snow's melted. It's got to uh, plus degrees again here in Stockholm, but um, back down at the boat yard now and I haven't seen the boat in three days, so Let's go and see what they've done and if the keel's off and everything, so... Let's check it out. Hey, look at that. As you can hear, uh, Patrick's well into the grinding now. Just with the um, oscillating saw then, uh, probably cutting the tabs off on the grid. But I'll check it out in a minute when he's a bit more free. You were saying that um uh, you're cutting these tabs away, right? Yeah. Uh, so that you can release the bonder underneath there. I think so. Okay. And then how do you how do you repair the uh, once you get the bonder out? How do you repair the inside of that? Inside this one or just inside here? Yeah. So so inside here. So so you've cut this away to do some like exploratory, right? Yep. Yeah. And then you're seeing which parts of the bonder are have delaminated, exactly. I guess. Yeah. Cool. And then when when you've uh, when you've done that and you kind of you're knocking the bonder out, mm -hmm. then how do you repair that? Do you just put a new bonder on the inside and yeah, then yeah, glass? Exactly. Yeah. We put some bonder inside and uh, we put some uh, glass fiber. Yeah. And um, I will do exactly the same in this area. Okay. And uh, then I will take this part uh, back again when I've like done mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. finish, just uh, to make this more stronger. Yeah, yeah, just to just to get more more places to to bond to. I I guess in here as well, you you're looking for points where you can use as strength points as well, so that, that it's like vertically, that you can get the glass vertical and things like that. Or exactly. yeah, okay. Yeah, it's looking good anyway at least. Yeah, I guess you I guess you're gonna come back here like later on I guess and start grinding that away when when this is done. So you do one part at a time I'm guessing or something. Yeah. Yeah, cool. 
Okay guys, well, Patrick's just finished up for the day and uh, did an awesome rundown with me on what's been happening and how he's done everything and, and the thoughts behind it as well. So, as you can see, the keel is now um, down and it's in the cradle. Um, apparently it was a bit of a pain to release. Because, of course, above the keel here you've got all this bonder or the, the seeker flex. Uh, bonding that to the hull. You've also got bonder around the bolt. So What Patrick had to do actually was drill holes next to all of the bolts um, into the steel plate that's inside here uh, So that it can uh, help release the bolts from the bonder. Otherwise, it was never gonna come down. You can see that just here um, You can see the bonder that's inside the holes on all of those boats. This is a metal plate as well that the keel uh, bonds to and it, it just gives the the uh, nuts additional strength so that it's uh, well bonded, in, bonded into the bottom of the hull here. And to be fair, it looks pretty strong. It will be interesting to see how um, how they're going to do that when they put the keel back on and everything to make it as strong as it was, if not stronger actually. So uh, yeah, we'll see that in the future videos. As you can see, so far Patrick has uh, uh, he's grinded away all of the gel coat around here in the areas that are going to be glassed. Um, I noted that in uh, on the expedition Evans boats, what they did on their uh, Beneteau. They actually ground away all of the gel coat on all of the uh, surfaces on these um, on the grid as well, and yeah, okay, they really went belt and braces on that. But uh, I think, to be honest, with the glass around these areas, around the bottom strengthening parts, that's going to be more than enough. Patrick also said to me that he's done a damage assessment all over the boat, and the damage extended uh, as far as the compression post up there. So. There was only damage on one side up there, but um, he's going to grind away the other side to make it look exactly the same on both sides. So the aesthetics um, are really good and they've got good attention to detail in that respect. So under there you can see uh, this is the bonder underneath the fiberglass there and that's what bonds the glass to the bottom of the hull there. So that's this is the stuff that's keeping the grid um, attached to the hull and that's what's giving the boat its strength basically. So what uh, what Patrick was doing is actually taking a, a belt sander and cutting down the tabs here because they extend a little further out, cutting down the tabs uh, so that he's got uh, an easier, easier surfaces to work with so that he can bond the glass both to the grid here and to the hull so he's going to come up and over and around here. Also down here as well, both to do some exploratory work um, and to do some repairs inside the grid here. He's chopped away a piece of the grid uh, so that he can get inside, take a look at all the bonder that's in there, uh, make sure that there's no cracks, there's no delamination, and then um, actually make some of these parts inside stronger as well, or try and lay some glass inside uh, so that it reinforces the grid also. One thing I learned actually about getting rid of this bonder as well, use an impact driver or just use a big screwdriver and a hammer and it, um, you can crack away the bonder there and that will get rid of it much more easily than uh, any circular saw or something like that. So you can see here two really useful tools that Patrick is using is both the oscillating tool here, that's amazing for cutting stuff on boat, I cannot, on the boat. I cannot recommend that tool enough actually. I just bought a cheap one, but it's been awesome. And then he's using um, uh, a compressed air uh, impact driver as well to get rid of the bonding. But when I do it, I just use a hammer and screwdriver. It works uh, pretty well. So far, it's really going well, I think. Um, it's really nice to come down here and be and go through the explanation of what he's doing and um, what the thoughts are behind it and really seeing what kind of strength is going to be put back into Aurora when she goes back in the water. Take a hammer here and just listen. Listen to the different sounds and you'll be able to tell actually which parts are, um, are delaminated 
and not. It's a really useful tip. The professionals have this huge advantage with this vacuum. Uh, this tube, this big vacuum cleaner basically, is sucking all of the dust out um, of the boat when they're grinding or doing anything like that. And that makes a massive difference into both the mess that it creates and the whole breathing and, well, you should be wearing masks of course and everything, but you know, just to stop all the dust going everywhere. And, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay guys, well, there's not that much more I can talk about on this week. It's uh, Friday today and I'll be back again on Tuesday to see how it's all went. Patrick's kindly offered to do some filming for me while he's doing some of the bits and um, yeah, we'll catch up with him again next week. So if you want to watch the next one, join us next week. So just a little bonus footage for you guys. Um, this Nayad, I think it's around a 34 or something like that. He's having the whole deck uh, replaced at the moment and it's causing a bit of a problem because all the fittings you can't get to uh, are underneath uh, the deck there. And when the, when the deck comes down, when the boats are built, the deck meets the hull, you're locked out of a lot of those fittings. So they're having to pull apart a lot of the furniture inside to get to all the fittings so they can get all the deck off and all the fittings off. and. Uh, yeah, but eventually um, it's going to be a synthetic teak deck uh, which will never rot and never have these problems. So this happens after about sort of 20 years, but um, with the synthetic, yeah, you're safe against that. So down here, um, there's an Elan uh, 40 footer uh, where Magnus is trying to get the keel off at the moment with some great difficulties, but it's coming eventually. So this one here uh, also had a really hard grounding as well. And you can see um, just the sheer extent of the damage here. And what he's going to have to do, um, because it's like bent the hull down here, is actually uh, build a, something on top of the hull here, or glass on top of the hull to meet uh, the keel and actually change the shape of the boat a little bit because of the beaners. It was such a hard impact to this boat. And inside, apparently, I haven't been up there yet, but inside, apparently, the, the force was so great that all the furniture pretty much got destroyed and uh, came apart. They must have hit the rock pretty damn hard to do that, and it's uh, quite a major repair that's got to be undertaken on this one. Soft outer shell, the yeah. actual hull, um, that bends now, yeah, because okay. everything is loose inside. And then, and then you're trying to lever this don't down. Don't put your hand there, don't oh, put your hand sorry. there. <laughs> because sorry. If, if it releases, it might close. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah, it yeah. might become a rat trap. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I value my fingers. <laughs> once it's down, yeah. uh, we're going to refurbish the keel, of course, and put it back. But this will be unfixable, so to say. Yeah. So we have to uh, cosmetically change the profile of the outer surface. Yeah. Uh, taper it off maybe a bit here and and use successive amount of, of um, well what we in Sweden call spacken what color it yeah. is filler or no, something yeah, yeah. filler oh. or a yeah. fairing compound or fairing compound right yeah. fairing compound and so 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 you um, you hide the anomalies and, and and maybe you tone it out uh, yeah. over here so you get a streamlined shape yeah, yeah. contour Sounds good. It sounds like you got your work cut out for you on this one, though. Yes. Jesus Christ! This is uh, this is ten weeks. This is ten week work. But but I yeah. uh, I heard your boat is rather smashed up as well because yeah. I think it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> there, uh, this was also when it was hired to someone. Yeah. It's a charter. Yeah. And they say, okay, we are on the ground, but very, very, very low speed. And, they and just they really, always say that. They always, I know they always <laughs> say that, but you have to assume that people speak the truth. So if yeah. they speak the truth, it might be because it has been run aground and not fixed properly the time before. Yeah. And you can see the, the, the lamination of the, of the house. Usually yeah. this doesn't appear like this. So okay. this, is, this is signs for very extensive damage. And now it's uh, attached to our little wagon, so we ride it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And let's grab it to do the work. 
but you don't want too big a boom when it does release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want it to Otherwise settle down gently, yeah. but sometimes it, it releases with a bang. Okay, and then... And boom! And then it just drops. And so no it, feet underneath. <laughs> yeah, does it take a lot of fiberglass with it then usually? Is um, it, really well it shouldn't because you see the, the surface is already, yeah. it's the glue that cracks. Yeah, okay. The, the stresses says you're in for some heavy duty grinding. Yeah. So if I break something now, it doesn't matter, I'll have to redo everything. Yeah, you just have anyway. to grind it all down anyway. Yeah. yeah. And when it gets too steep inclination, mm. the bolts will jam themselves oh, in the hole. Yeah, they'll go, yeah. Yeah. And sideways, so pretty you, much. Yeah. yeah. So you, and now I'm a bit concerned that maybe we are approaching that point. And then you yeah. have to pull the keel up again <laughs> in order to make it go out in the rear, uh, in the front. Mm. Refixing the off part might loosen the front part of the key. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I can understand how you want to get to a good point before you leave on yeah. Friday, right? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I want to keel down before I leave the shop. <coughs> We don't need to do exercise. <laughs> we save on our gym cards. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of calories burnt in here. I don't know. Not enough today. <coughs> because this thing isn't moving. Multipause up. Put on. There you go. Here it is. Oh. Uh, no, um, no MS polymer filler. <laughs> they used to a little of it when they sat the key. Okay. Yeah. Because you see the bag glass fiber and also in front, so yeah. it has been standing water on top of the. Good job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is another interesting repair in this uh, workshop here, actually. Um, this boat uh, fell off the stands, so the, up in Sundsvall, actually, north of Stockholm, about four hours' drive or something. Um, yeah, the stands apparently came away, and the boat ended up on its side. So all of this side of the hull uh, here was um, smashed in. So there's a lot of glass work having to take place here, and a lot of uh, core work as well, I guess and a lot of furniture work inside. But it's just interesting to see these, these um, projects that they've got to do, you know? They've, they've really got to think outside of the box. And um, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.